my name is Karen Dirksen. I am a PhD student at the Virginia Tech Agriculture Research and Extension Center here on the Eastern Shore. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about edamame and specifically um, soil fertility and nutrient management for edamame. Now edamame is uh, vegetable soybeans. Now, the United States is a world leader of soybean production but imports approximately 70% of the edamame that is consumed in the United States. Soybean producers and retailers are interested in capitalizing on these new edamame markets to provide a domestic product. So as farmers shift production to edamame, traditional management practices that are tried and true for soybeans may need to be reconsidered when growing edamame. Edamame is sold in the pod, which means that the appearance of plants must be flawless to ensure high quality crop. Crop nutrition and soil fertility are two key elements which help maintain healthy aesthetic plants. Although just like soybeans, edamame is able to form symbiotic relationships with bacteria and fix atmospheric nitrogen. Applying supplementary nitrogen may prove to boost early season growth and increase yield. The addition of nitrogen may also prove to accelerate maturity, decreasing time for pests to damage edamame bean quality. Here at the Eastern Shore Research Station, two different fertility management approaches were considered, the first utilizing current oilseed soybean fertility programs, while the second was applying a fertility program similar to snap bean, a vegetable legume with similar development to edamame. With this study, we hope to determine the optimal nitrogen rate and timing for edamame in the Mid-Atlantic Coastal Plain system, and also determine whether nitrogen could accelerate maturity, thereby decreasing the opportunity for pests and diseases to damage bean quality. This study was done on sandy loam soils. To represent a traditional soybean management strategy, a zero fertilizer treatment was used as a control. Then, using SNAP fertility programs as a guide, four nitrogen rates were applied. Additionally, in order to de determine optimal timings, these four rates were applied at two different timings, either at planting or uh, with a split application, with half the nitrogen being applied at planting and half at the R1 de developmental stage, when the plant starts to flower. Lastly, uh, a treatment with both nitrogen and sulfur was applied to determine if sulfur was limiting in this specific system. At R1, tissue samples were collected and analyzed for total carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur content. Then at the R7 development stage, shown in figure four, the edamame was harvested. To determine if the different treatments had any effect on maturity, plant height, SPAD, and NDVI measurements were taken. Then, post-harvest physical and chemical analysis of enamame pods were performed using near-infrared spectroscopy and also Lawson ignition method. Here in figure six, we can see how nitrogen rate and when it was applied impacted yield. With yield on the y-axis and rate of nitrogen on the x-axis, You'll see the maroon line following the circle data points indicates when all the nitrogen was applied at planting, while the orange line with square data points indicates the split applications of nitrogen, and the gray triangle indicates the sulfur treatment. Here we can see that the interaction between nitrogen rate and timing are significant, so when run separately, it was found that the nitrogen rate was significant when all the nitrogen was applied at planting, but split application uh, was not significant. You can see the upward trending line and higher rates of nitrogen led to higher yields. Figure seven displays two different methods of measuring how green the plants were, with the hypothesis that earlier maturing treatments would be less green than later maturing treatments. Um, with this chart, again, rate of application is on the x-axis while NDVI is on the y-axis and SPAD is on the secondary y-axis. The lower two maroon lines with circular markers indicate NDVI readings and the upper two lines with square markers indicate SPAD readings. The solid line represents at planting application while dotted lines indicate split application. Um, when the least significant difference values found at the lower left corner are applied, there's no significant difference when comparing any of these values. So based on these results, um, in this field, uh, in, this treat, in this study, 
there was no effect on maturity with the different nitrogen or sulfur rates. After harvest, when physical quality and chemical composition of pods and beans were measured, only the nitrogen to sulfur ratio was found to be significant. You can see all the different aspects that were measured to determine differences in quality and just different things that consumers may consider to be significant. Um, while, like I said before, only the nitrogen to sulfur ratio was a significant difference. Uh, this shows that the plants responded when different amounts of nitrogen were applied to the soil. Figure 8 shows this difference. Again, uh, nitrogen rate is on the x-axis and the nitrogen to sulfur ratio is on the y-axis. The maroon bars indicate when all the nitrogen was supplied at planting, while orange bars represent split application of nitrogen. The gray bar represents the sulfur treatment. Bars with different letters above them are statistically different. And so while there's lots of letters, while many of the treatments are similar, and there sh are a few differences that should be noted. At planting applications show higher trends of um, nitrogen to sulfur ratios. Also, when nitrogen is applied at higher rates, the nitrogen to sulfur ratio increases. And lastly, when sulfur is applied, the nitrogen to sulfur ratio decreases. So the plant is responding to what is in the soil. These are important ratios to keep, um, keep record of and to keep track of throughout the season. Um, it's important to note as to too high or too low nitrogen to sulfur ratios can indicate crop deficiencies. Um, and this is something um, to further look at. Um, so in conclusion, as seen um, in figure six, increased rates of nitrogen increased yield when applied at planting, while split application did not show an increase in yield. We did not see ev evidence that nitrogen significantly accelerated maturity. Nitrogen and sulfur fertility did impact total nitrogen to sulfur ratios of the edamame bean. As you can see, there's many interactions occurring in the soil that may give yield results and lead to increased plant health. We are repeating this test in 2020 and hope to gain some more valuable information on edamame soil fertility and plant nutrition. Thank you to the USDA NIF A Specialty Crops Research Initiative, Virginia Tech Agricultural Research and Extension Centers, and Virginia Farmers. Thanks for listening.